Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Mishmash Monday. We got a uh, pretty good episode today. I've been planning a few things, so let's get started right away. Now, growing up in the 1960s, uh, one of the really popular things that was uh, all over the airwaves and everywhere you looked on TV when I was uh, space and space exploration and what was going on with the space race. And, you know, it was only... Uh, uh, a few years, 1969, we did the moon landing, and uh, but there were so many things going on, and I was always intrigued by space and space travel. Now, space has always been interesting. I mean, back in the old days, they had books, and then they went to radio programs, but when they came to TV, that's when it really sparked. Remember the old Lost in Space and Star Trek series, but like I said, 69, we went to the moon, and then the Skylab. You remember Skylab in 73, and then it came crashing down to Earth six years later? Uh, back in 75, we launched the Apollo Soyuz mission, and then the first space shuttle in 1981, the Columbia, and that was up. But it was the International Space Station that they started sending up in pieces that was really exciting because that's been up there uh, since 1998 when they started sending parts up, and that's what I find so interesting. Now, about 12 years ago, I was really heavily into astronomy, and, and um, I noticed that there was a blogs that would show when the International Space Station was going to be around. So I remember uh, I was heading up to my sister's on Thanksgiving, I think it was, and uh, I stopped at a mountaintop and I waited for the first time I saw the International Space Station. It was it was it, crazy. I was so excited. And um, I still am. I still get that thrill every time I see it, no matter when it is. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of times. So that's why I think it's such a great thing for you to uh, introduce your family to, introduce your friends to, and introduce yourself to if you've never seen it before. Now, you can always find this information online, but the easiest way is to get an app like this one here. And, and when you get the app, it gives you a full calendar of when the uh, space station will be passing and uh, the visibility. It also has a full-time map of the uh, world, and it shows where the the space station is at any particular time. On the right, you could see where I live on the East Coast, but you could see that ring around the uh, space station is the visibility ring. Now, it also has a, a cool interactive maps here that it shows exactly according to the sky you're looking at where the shuttle is, uh, space station is going to come up and pass. Uh, here you can see it says due west, and if you look at the flagpole, that's pretty much due west, and there was the uh, space station just right of the flagpole. Here was uh, last night, and you could see right next to my bird table, uh, you could see that's uh, another shot of the uh, uh, space station. But this is an interesting video because this video I took on the iPhone uh, in 2011. still have it on my phone. And uh, this particular um, video I took when I came, finished work, and it was about <clears throat> 5 o'clock in the morning, and you could hear the birds and whatnot. And it was very interesting because, uh, you know, it's hard to actually film the uh, the International Space Station with something like an iPhone, you usually need some low light capability. But you could hear the birds chirping. This was a uh, it was interesting. But you could see what it looks like when it passes through. Now, back when I was working, uh, we were shifting buses around, and I would get all the guys interested in seeing the space station pass overhead, you know, uh, and every time a new guy who never saw it before, all the other guys would, you know, say, hey, you got to see this, and we we had quite a group that would be looking for these, uh, the space station passes, and one of, one time in particular that was really exciting for me was, uh, uh, when the uh, space shuttle Atlantis, I think it was 2011, was the last time, last uh, sh uh, space shuttle flight ever, and they were hooking up with the uh, International Space Station, and uh, I got all the guys in the yard. It was going to be a good view. It was coming straight overhead. It was very going to be very bright, and sure enough, uh, it came one blip right behind the other. So you saw both of them up there passing across, and and we were cheering. It was it was so incredible, and uh, really had a good time. So uh, I think you should you would really enjoy it. Something you should definitely uh, try and do. Now I guess what's so interesting is the International Space Station is absolutely huge. It's almost the size of a football field. It'll be bigger than a football field when it's finished. And it's traveling at over 17,000 miles an hour. And when we look up at it, you're not seeing any lights generated by the International Space Station by itself.
itself. What you're seeing is a reflection of the sun, much like when we look at the moon. So uh, that's why you can only see it at certain times. So uh, I implore you, if you have a chance, get one of those apps or take a look in the okay, sky and find Okay, next up it. I want to talk a little bit about paper, something in the shop that we kind of take for granted or... Or maybe we don't think enough about. Let's now, this hobby it. that we're in is really inexpensive. Once you get a few tools together, I mean, it's uh, we don't have a lot of outlay of money to buy supplies and whatnot. But there are some things that will make your, your time in the shop so much more enjoyable. And one of them is, you know, you should have some different paper products around the shop. For example, you know, you have a regular couple boxes of tissues. How many times you need specific types? you got to wipe off something or whatever. Tissues are always good to have. Uh, you buy them by the box, obviously, the doll store. Next up, we have paper towel. A good paper towel. I like Bounty. I like the way it feels. I like the way it absorbs. Bounty, it's not it's not cheap, but it's uh, really good. And I like the selector size, which means that this is a normal sheet of paper towel, but the selector size, they cut it in the middle. So you're not using a big piece of paper towel. You, you know, you're cutting it in half. And also, you know, a lot of times I'll rip that in a piece if I need a smaller piece. So I go through a lot of Bounty. I like it. It's a great paper towel. But... Then we step up. Here's where it starts to get good, you know. Um, Sellers is a company, and obviously I'm not sponsored by anybody, but you can see it's made in the USA. This stuff, it's you've probably seen them as shop towels, the blue shop towels like this. And then they have the white rags, which look like this. And uh, what a difference these make. If you're going to do any kind of polishing out or things like that, uh, if you look real close at the, at the weave and the fiber, you can see like paper towel has has these little uh, bumps here and things like that and it raises it up so you've seen me recommend these before especially when you're doing any kind of paint removal or something like that remember I said when you paint on something on the letters you want to remove or um, this is the what you want to use you don't want to have any bubbles or any uh, indentations in the paper but either the blue or the white I use this for all my tools when I wax them before you see them for the last time they get done with this so this is great for waxing and whatnot so uh, and and the blue is really good. I know for those of you that have used these out there, you're, you're shaking your head yes, because I'm sure you agree. But um, these run about $2 a roll. These run about 3 to $4 a roll, the white ones. But uh, they're really good. They come uh, 60 sheets uh, you get in a roll. Well worth it. It's uh, something you should pick up, and, and I think you'll enjoy it. So just uh, passing on that tip. I really enjoy using okay, these. Okay, next up, a uh, good friend of the show by the name of Rick. Rick has a uh, Instagram channel, great little channel. It's called Back Into Service. Rick does restorations, things like that, and uh, he does restorations like, like you would, you know, m like nobody would have a problem with his restorations. He does it the way everybody would like, you know, where he doesn't take off any metal or anything. Rick likes to make his tools look like, uh, like you w went into a museum or something, you know, just uh, gets rid of all the rust and preserves them, things like that. He has a, uh, you can check out his channel, Back Into Service on Instagram. But um, Rick hooked me up big time by uh, introducing me to a, a gentleman by the name of Carl Knox. And Carl makes uh, wedges. Let's get, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, uh, Ricky made a deal with Carl uh, to send me these wedges. He did a little bit of a horse trading or something. And I do appreciate it, Ricky, so much. So uh, let me tell you what these are. These are wedges that we would use for either axes or hammers or anything. And they're... Uh, and what uh, Carl does is Carl is a woodworker and he makes these wedges out. Now, if you ever tried to make a wedge, I've been making my own wedges for years. And it that's probably one of the bigger pains of, uh, especially if you don't have a really good bandsaw. You need to have a really good bandsaw in order to make a wedge perfect like that. And um, so he gets these wedges. He makes them and he sells them. All the woodworking community apparently knows about this guy. And he uh, he's, uh, I think he's in Illinois and he has a lot of different hardwoods and, and what he does is he'll uh you can order uh different types of woods that he has or you can uh mix and match him basically his prices are he uh charges uh i believe it's six dollars a dozen for a, a dozen wedges and uh you can and then eight dollars to ship it but he has a special that he'll send you six here, six dozen wedges, which is a lifetime supply for everybody I know, um, shipped to your door for $40. So if you're a woodworker or you like to do a handle replacements, things like that, it's a really good deal. And uh, like I said, what's so interesting is when you get into uh, handling hammers or axes, you know, you can 
uh, have different colors uh, on the woods, you know, like for example, look at this hedge here. This is hedge wood and look at that nice you know, How nice would that look? Look at the grain on there Look at that what it would look like on the top of a of a, a nicely set handle here We have honey locust you could see here um, Walnut black locust sycamore and red cedar, but what's interesting is when you look at a wedge like this, you know, you say, you know, this looks kind of thick, of course, because you're not using this part. Basically, you're going to cut the wedge down to the size. So, you know, if you're doing a hammer, this is going to do at least two, maybe three hammers, this one wedge. And you're going to cut it up here with a handsaw. And then, you know, uh, when you wedge it in, you're going to bang it in until it gets to the point, And then you're going to cut this off. So you'll even have excess. God knows you can do quite a bit of uh, woodworking uh, ha handle handling with uh, these uh, wedges. So uh, again, thanks so much, Ricky. I think that was really great. And uh, I'm going to put the information to a call. I'm going to put down his uh, email address. If you're interested in this, like I said, he's uh, apparently a lot of woodworkers already know about him. That's they're the he's the go-to guy for people that want wedges. But if you're thinking of doing, don't don't bother cutting your own when you have a guy that's uh, has this kind of wood and things like that available. So thanks very much again, Rick, and uh, thanks to you. Carl. Next up, I want to introduce you to this. Do you know what this is? I know some of you are probably saying it looks like an onion. You'd be close, but not right on. This is a Vidalia onion and it's grown in Vidalia, Georgia, and it's a special type of sweet onion. If you've never had one of these, I'm sorry, I, uh, I feel for you, but if you've had one of these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can eat these like an apple. They are just the best onion ever made. So next time you're in a supermarket, if you see Vidalia onions, pick one up and it'll change your life. Last up, I have some old footage on my phone from uh, when I went to Kent Steam Show, and there's an easy cutter lawnmower, electric remote control, used a simple two-switch remote control box, ran off a long extension cord, pretty rare, and you don't see these, they were made between the 40s and 50s from Wind Power out of Iowa, check this out. Okay, in closing, we had a pretty good mosh there. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and a great start of the week. Take care now. Bye-bye.